UK driving gigs. I think I mentioned this previously, but I think there's a new story popping up now regarding uh, Pacific gigs happening in the UK. Because I think the story that I mentioned on the previous episode was to do with um, them springing up all over the world. Now, the the, the premise behind having a, a driving gig is pretty simple, right? You know, with lockdown, um, uh, with lockdown still being a thing in most of the parts of the world, right? Not many places, maybe apart from a couple of countries have come out of lockdown um but most places are in some kind of lockdown that's restricting people from going out and mingling in social areas such as bars and clubs and concert halls so promoters are getting you know creative and trying to figure out ways that they can get people to go out and see their favorite artist and sort of like you know experience that sort of live music feel and i think they've done it in america i think bert christ is a comedian that's sort of trialing doing a little driving stand-up comedy tour there's djs doing it in some parts of europe but this is the first sort of indication we're going to see that they're going to do it here in the uk now the weird thing about doing it in the uk is that usually in my experience from what i know again i don't drive so i don't know if this is an underground culture thing but there aren't many places that you can go to in the uk where they do sort of driving entertainment it's not a thing we have here i know people used to go on um what's those little camping trips used to go people my some of my friends went on where they sort of like is that butlins where you go with your van do your parents take you with your van you park up and then you sort of like station there and there's little tents or buildings that the kids can go in and have fun and there's adult areas as well i think that, i don't know i think it's butlins right those kind of places so those they exist in the uk they're very popular especially outside of london but the experience of going into like a car park somewhere and there being a massive screen and you're watching you know uh, a 70s movie or whatever else and a, you know whatever that thing is doesn't really exist you know it's sort of the scene you'd picture in american cinema right the car the amazing cadillac from like the, you know the 60s pulling up to a driving um cinema place somewhere and these star-crossed you know romantic lovers um you know kissing you know with their shadows sort of like in the distance that's the thing you'd remember from like a, an american cinema you don't really mention it don't really something you see in uk places so it's a bit strange to see them kind of pushing it here but again i think these promotion companies have lost so much money over the period of covid19 they're just trying anything anything they can to try and scrape together some pennies right to try and make things worthwhile and obviously to make sure the company stays around so that when full lock so when full lockdown is lifted they can you know still be left standing so this article from bbc detailing it says plans for a uk-wide driving gigs announced it says a series of driving concerts that take place across the uk this summer promoters live nation over now so that's a big big play in the game the likes of ash Dizzy rascal the lightning seeds and gary newman have all signed up to play at the live from the driving events outdoor spaces in birmingham liverpool and london will play host as well as the edinburgh bristol and beyond the 300 car gig have been designed to provide a safe alternative to many of the events uh, that have been cancelled. The concert series, which has also featured the streets and Tony Hadley, will run from mid-July to September until music venues continue talks with government about how and when they might reopen in the wake of COVID-19. Now, from what I've read, all indications point towards there being no live events with mass groups of people until a vaccine is found, basically. Um, everything that I've read online so far about the virus, you know, we all know the same information, you know, it's, it's an airborne virus, spreads via droplets, and it kind of is exasperated, it's, um, the effects are exasperated, yeah, the effects of it, right, is that the effects of the term, whatever that term is, um, when you are in a closed environment where people are shouting or talking very loudly, that's why they they propose if you're going to be on public transport wear face coverings keep to be distance two meters distance apart whatever social distance and also make sure you don't talk too much um so i can't imagine governments being okay with green lighting people um gathering en masse unless you're like an american government right but gathering en masse to attend a concert with covid19 still around it's just not worth the risk especially to putting yourself at the crosshairs of liability unless you get people to sign waivers or stuff before they get in the place but i don't think it will stop people from you know from suing if they end up falling ill or worse comes to worse god forbid somebody ends up passing away as a you know as a consequence of going to your event so everyone's saying no live events until next year uh, or until a vaccine is found so uh, you can understand the desperation from them to do this sort of thing here but it continues the article it says uh, more than 400 grassroots venues are facing permanent closure according to the music venue trust bloody hell um 
it has warned the UK government that an immediate cash injection of 50 million is needed to prevent mass closures in July, August and September. The organisation also called for a one-off uh, cut in the VAT on ticket sales for the next three years and is running a campaign to raise money for threatened venues. Initiatives such as the virtual festival in Bristol this weekend, which artists like Labyrinth, no, I'm sorry, Lady Smith, Black Mond, Ma what? Lady Smith, Black Mambuza, and Beth Rowley aiming to hit twenty thousand donations. Who's who's really going to be performing at a driving gig? It's not going to be anyone you want to see, right? I love Dizzy, right? That first album, Boy in the Corner, is one of my, you know, goes will go down the history as one of the greatest albums of all time. But are you really trying to see a Dizzy Rascal gig in general? I'm not. And would you want to see him in your car for a screen somewhere? I don't. I wouldn't either. So. The people performing are the ones that no one wants to see, right? The absolute dregs of the entertainment world in the UK. And then the people going, are they just bored? Or is it just a thing of like, fuck it, why not? Which is the same thing really. But I don't see what would possess me to go to a, a car park somewhere in the UK to go and see someone play. Especially, oh, this is just before, but it's now. We have some of the worst um, noise pollution laws, you know, this side of Europe, mate. Do you know what I mean? Most festivals in the UK, the sound is horrendous unless you're in the middle of nowhere. There's always putting limiters on it, cancels, complaining. It's not the best thing. So I don't know what are they going to relax the license, the sound pollution limitation for the venues that are hosting this sort of thing. Um, I wonder how they're going to get around with that sort of stuff. Like, um, it continues. It says reimagine the live experience. Said Live Nation is one of the UK's biggest concert promoters and owns venues like Cardiff's Motor Point Arena and London's Brixton Academy, which are unlikely to open their doors before the end of the year. See, told you. Um, the company's share prices fell from seventy five dollars sixty pounds to twenty nine dollars twenty three pounds in March. That is, I don't know anything about stock, but I'm assuming um, falling more than half of your value in one month isn't a good thing. Um, in March as a lockdown took hold although the figure is now hovering about 50 to 40 to 50 it still hasn't recovered fully it says driving concerts with limited audiences will not necessarily reverse their fortunes but promoters Peter Taylor said the company was excited to help live music resume yeah right Peter Taylor wants to keep his job <laughs> it says here the concert the other concert series was created as a way to reimagine the live music experience during a time of social distancing by allowing fans to enjoy concerts in the safest possible way yeah, I guess, man. Again, you can count me out of it. I, I would, I would much rather um, attend. I would much rather get Carl Cox to DJ in my living room, right, with his big smiley face, than go somewhere like that. Like, no, thank you. And you know, I'd be tempted to throw an eye in at Carl Cox's head as he's DJing. So imagine me trying to go to like a driving gig. It's just not gonna happen. It's not the vibe. But hey, what do I know? 